In this video, we'll begin our look at the new Slice X found in FL Studio 8. This new loop slicer makes it easier than ever to load up and create loops for use inside the FL Studio environment. FL Studio has in fact always had great support for loops, but now with SliceX, you can create your own loops with beat markers to ensure perfect tempo when matching between your projects and loops, as well as being able to map each beat to an individual key on your MIDI controller keyboard, allowing you to further tweak the loop any way you like. In this video, we'll look at the general interface as well as loading samples into a SliceX channel, how to audition the beats from within the interface and your MIDI controller keyboard, and how SliceX will integrate the loaded sample into your project. Let's begin by adding a SliceX channel. This is done in the usual manner. Select Channels, Add One, and choose SliceX. The SliceX interface will appear. At this point, let's take a look at loading a sample in the SliceX. This can be done in a few ways. One is to click on the SliceX logo. This will prompt you with an open dialog box in order to locate your sample. Another method is to use the file icon to locate your desired file. Take note that also in the load file icon menu, you can select a file from a list of recently loaded samples. Handy if you're often working with the same loop. Here I have opened a recently opened drum loop. You will note that this loop already has markers in place as this is an acidized loop in which SliceX supports for ease of use of acidized users. Let's audition this loop. By clicking on the play button, you will hear a one-time playback of the loop. By clicking on the loop playback, you'll begin the playback in loop mode, which is beneficial when editing the loop points. Now, of course, when editing loops and their beats, you'll want to audition the individual beats as opposed to the loop as a whole. Again, there are a few ways to do that. One is to use the marker drop-down selection menu. This will automatically highlight the selected loop marker region. From here, clicking on play or loop play will result in the playback of the selected region only. Also, if you are to right click on the region, you will also audition that region alone. If your goal is to be able to play each loop region from its own mapped key on your MIDI keyboard, then you may want to audition the marker region with the provided on-screen keyboard. The keys that the regions are automatically mapped to are highlighted in pink across the keyboard. Clicking on a key will trigger the playback of its mapped region. If you have a MIDI controller keyboard connected and activated in FL Studio, then you can also trigger the loop's region from your keyboard. Integrating the loop into your project is fairly easy. If the auto dump option is enabled, then each loop that you load into SliceX will automatically have its regions placed into the piano roll. This is, of course, if that loop you load has markers in it already. If you do not have auto dump enabled, then when you load a loop with markers, nothing is placed to the channel's piano roll. To manually place your loop into the piano roll, you only need to click on the dump score button to place the current markers into the piano roll. So now that we have a loop loaded and can audition it, let's have a quick look at the interface. The edit properties option allows you to enter some information about this loop. Here you can also set the loop's tempo. In most cases, it is best to let SliceX calculate these values for you. If you have made some changes to the tempo, you can always restore it to the default setting. At the bottom, you can assign the middle key. This is useful if you're using a melodic bass loop and want the pitch of the loop to be matched that of the key on your keyboard. If you know the pitch of the loop, enter it here. If not, you can use the auto detect to have SliceX learn the pitch. From the view menu, you can customize the look of the loop editor as well as change in the view to a spectrum view or dual view. You can also use the view menu to show or hide markers in the loops. The snap menu can help you in your making sure that your markers are snapped to the correct position. Some often uses of snap options are snap into grid, which will place the markers exactly on beat. Snap into zero, which will make sure that each marker is placed at a zero point in the waveform to ensure no clicks and pops will appear in the loop. Skipping along, the select tool allows you to select certain regions of the loop. The zoom tool allows you to zoom in and out of the waveform. The undo button undoes the last edit performed. Normalize the loops or region with the normalization button. 
the fade in button will perform a fade to the selected region or the entire loop. Same with the fade out button. The time option allows you to alter the length of the sample without affecting the pitch. You can enter the exact length of the loop in milliseconds or you can manually enter the new desired tempo of the loop. If you do change the tempo of the loop already being used in a project, remember you might want to adjust the project's tempo to match. Lastly on the interface, a few preset buttons near the top allow you to quickly show and hide certain windows and sections of the interface to help keep it less cluttered. So in this video we had a look at loading SliceX into a channel, loading and auditioning samples as well as a brief look over the interface. In the next SliceX video we'll be taking a look at creating markers and regions.